As the reigning world champion, Max Verstappen doesn't need any introduction to fans of the sport. And if you're watching this video, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you at least have a passing interest in Formula 1. But despite being only 24, Max's career is already something else and worth exploring. In this video, I want to take a look at Max's history in the feeder series and in F1, as well as see what the future might hold for the Flying Dutchman. And with him, it was never a question of if he would become a racing driver, but rather when he would end up behind the wheel. With former F1 driver dad and kart racing mum, going fast around the circuit was in Max's genes. But before we get to Max, let's take a close look at his family, specifically his dad, Jos Verstappen. Verstappen Sr.'s own career has been all but eclipsed by Max's. Other than being a dark figure lurking in the Red Bull garage, he's best known for his terrifying pit stop at the 1994 German Grand Prix. During the pit stop, a fuel hose came loose and the car with Verstappen in it was engulfed in flames. Luckily, he escaped with only minor injuries and his debut in F1 wasn't cut short. As a side note, this is why we also don't see refuels in the middle of races anymore. Alas, the German Grand Prix of 1994 was the brightest Jos Verstappen ever burned in F1. One. Racing for Benetton, he collected two podiums the same year, finishing third back-to-back -back in Hungary and Belgium. He collected a grand total of 10 points and landed 10th in the championship. In 1995, Joss was loaned to Simtech and after three retirements in the first three races and a 12th place finish in Spain, the team went bankrupt. This left Verstappen without a drive and then in 1996, he managed to collect a single point with footwork arrows. And his seasons in 1997 and 1998 with Terrell and Stewart respectively weren't much better. In fact, they were worse. Joss collected a grand total of zero points during the two seasons, but Verstappen's patchy results weren't always his fault. He had moved around from team to team quite a lot and driven cars of extremely variable quality. His DNS were often consequences of reliability issues instead of his own skill. Verstappen actually looked set to continue with Terrell in 1998, but he was kicked out of the team in favour of pay driver Ricardo Rosette. This left him without a seat until Stewart invited him to replace Jan Magnussen in the middle of the season. And yes, before you ask, Jan Magnussen is indeed the father of Kevin Magnussen. Yep, F1 truly is the sport of nepotism. 1999 looked promising for Verstappen as he was signed to test drive the Honda F1 team who was planning on joining the sport in the 2000s. But despite showing good results in testing and Verstappen's odds finally looking up, his rotten luck struck once again. And this was due to the mastermind behind the Honda F1 project, Harvey Postlethwaite, unexpectedly dying of a heart attack. This led to Honda changing their decision from being a team to being an engine manufacturer, leaving Verstappen seatless once again. Venturing back to the Arrows in 2000, Joss managed to keep a seat for two years straight for the first time. Unfortunately, the stable drive didn't translate into results though. Earning a total of six points during his two years at Arrows, he was set to keep the drive for 2002, before he was unceremoniously replaced by Heinz Harold Frenston. After a driverless 2002, Verstappen was signed to Minardi in 2003, which would be his last season in F1. Joss went out of the sport with whatever the opposite of a bang is, finishing the season in 22nd with nil points. Another interesting little fact from Joss Verstappen's fairly cursed F1 career is that he missed out on two drives because he was too big to fit in the cars, once with Sauber in 2002 and once with Jordan in 2004. In modern F1 folklore, Joss Verstappen has developed a reputation for a borderline abusive parent and a strict training manager with unorthodox methods, including holding kart testing seasons in the freezing cold when Max could barely hold the steering wheel. You can't help but to wonder if Joss's strict methods were a result of his own disappointing career and a way to live vicariously as a world champion through his son. But we shouldn't just credit Joss for making Max the world champion that he is today. Before marrying Joss Verstappen and having children, Max's mother Sophie Kumpen was a force to be reckoned with within the karting world. During the late 80s and early 90s, Kumpen raced against future F1 driver Giancarlo Fisichella and Jensen Button, as well as her son's current boss Christian Horner. The Red Bull boss has even said that in 1989, I raced against her in the Junior Kart World Championship. In that race were some super talented drivers, Jan Magnussen, Jano Trulli, Giancarlo Fisichella, Dario Franchitti. F1 drivers have some complicated names. She was in the top 10 of the world for sure. It's Italians, it's always Italians. And as if that wasn't all enough, Sophie's cousin is a former NASCAR driver, Anthony Cumman. So Max probably has petrol running through his veins instead of blood. Joss Verstappen and Sophie Cumman married in 1996 and went on to have Max and his sister Victoria. As Joss Verstappen's F1 career ended in 2003, he was free to focus on training and managing his son, and the young Max made his karting debut in 2005. 
Max's karting record was largely composed of wins, with his junior trophy cabinet putting many all-time greats to shame. Just look at 2013, he won both the European KF and KZ titles, as well as the KZ1 World Championship, in which he beat future rival Charles Leclerc by 3 seconds. With such accolades under his belt, it was time to leave the karting world behind and join a racing series. Many young drivers start out in one of the regional Formula Renault series, move to Formula 3, then to Formula 2 until they hopefully make it into the pinnacle of motorsports Formula 1. But not Max Verstappen. In late 2013, he test drove Formula 3 cars for the first time, and in 2014, he joined the Formula 3 Championship, in which he raced against future rival Esteban Ocon, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Nicolas Latifi. I won't call him a rival though. Verstappen's one and only season in Formula 3 was a mixed bag of first places, retirements, and a few mid-range finishes, but he ended up coming third in the championship. Although Ocon beat Verstappen and took the championship, Max actually had more race wins, 10 to Ocon's 9. But crucially, at the end of the season, he had a seat in F1, something that Ocon would have to wait another two years for. Max was a Red Bull Junior program driver since 2013, and he was signed to Toro Rosso for the 2015 season leaving fellow junior driver Pierre Gasly to wait for his turn. Toro Rosso's hurry to bag Max Verstappen, who at the time of signing only had half a season of single-seat experience, raised many eyebrows. Just to remind you, he was a legacy driver, but he was carrying the legacy of Joss Verstappen, not Michael Schumacher or Ayrton Senna. I bring up Senna for a reason, because when asked which driver the then 16-year-old Verstappen was most similar to, Red Bull's helmet Marco said, most likely S and Senna. He's an exceptional talent that comes along only once in a decade. Whether he's an all-time great like Senna remains to be seen, but Verstappen has already made a place for himself in F1 history. Entering his first race at the 2015 Australian Grand Prix at the tender age of 17 years and 166 days, he became the youngest driver to ever compete in F1. Six months before his race, he took part in the 2014 Japan Grand Prix practice session and became the youngest driver to participate in F1 weekend then as well. At the time of his F1 debut, Verstappen didn't even have a driving license because he was too young to have one. Quite reasonably, the FIA never expected to have a 17-year-old with no driving license and only having a single season in Formula 3 experience to make it to F1. So despite all the eyebrows being raised, they had no rules that could stop Max from competing. However, this led to Max changing the sport forever, because what they did to combat this was introduce a super license system and a minimum age requirement. Let's go through what all the current requirements are that Max failed to meet. First up is, you have to be at least 18 at the start of your F1 career. Well, Max was 17, so he didn't meet this one. Next, you have to be a holder of a valid driving license. Well, as I've said, he didn't have this, so he won't pass as either. Third was, you have to have two full seasons of single-seater race experience. Well, he only had one, so once again, he isn't passing here. And you have to have at least 40 super license points, which his third place in the F3 championship would have only given him 20, so once again, no. And another thing that all of this means is Max's various age-related records like youngest driver to participate in a race weekend, youngest competitor, and youngest point scorer will never be beaten. Verstappen's rookie season in F1 ended with him scoring 49 points, getting 12th position in the championship, and the title of Rookie of the Year, proving that he did belong in F1 despite people's doubts. Of course, the season wasn't all smooth sailing. Verstappen didn't achieve a single podium, although he did come fourth twice, and he had four retirements during the 19 race season. And that's not to mention the reputation that he did gain. An aggressive driver and overtaker from the very beginning, his close shaves on the track prompted many to brand him hot-headed and even dangerous. One of the defining moments of Max's rookie season was at the Monaco Grand Prix, where he crashed into Roman Grosjean's Lotus and received a five-place grid penalty. Many drivers and fans alike took this as proof that Max was too volatile and immature to drive an F1. Yet, the perfectly reasonable results that he got with a less than competitive car that Toro Rosso supplied him with spoke louder than the controversies, and there was no chance of Max losing his seat in 2016. Famously, he ended up exchanging his Toro Rosso seat for a much, much sweeter Red Bull drive after the 2016 Russian Grand Prix. He got this after Daniil Kvyat was demoted for his notorious crash with Vettel. 
Verstappen started his career with Red Bull by winning the Spanish Grand Prix and snatching the youngest race winner title at 18 years and 228 days of age. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, not really. We all know that despite some growing pains, Verstappen went on to become a world champion, but it did take him a good few years to go from rookie to reigning world champion. Once the young driver novelty wore off, at least somewhat, Max's early years in F1 were defined by his partnership with his teammate Daniel Ricciardo. In Verstappen and Ricciardo, Red Bull has struck marketing gold, and since Ricciardo's departure, they have failed to replicate the popularity of the duo with any other pairing. But despite the fact that they looked like best mates whilst fooling around in promo videos, things weren't so friendly in the paddock or on the track. Even though he was the more experienced and higher scoring of the two, Ricardo saw himself increasingly demoted to play second fiddle to Verstappen. Despite race wins here and there, neither Red Bull drivers were ever in the runnings for the championship, and they were each other's main competition. But by 2018, it was clear that Red Bull was trying to nurture Verstappen into a championship contender, with Ricardo preferably always in second, fending off advances from any other rivals. There are two standout moments in the verstappen ricardo rivalry. At the 27 Hungarian Grand Prix, Verstappen crashed into Ricardo on the first lap, which prompted the usually good-natured Aussie to call him a sore loser and an amateur. And then Baku 2018 happened. The two Red Bulls were fighting for fourth on lap 40, when a late maneuver from Verstappen left Ricardo with nowhere to go. He crashed into Max and took both cars out of the race. Neither driver was ruled to have full responsibility for the action, but they both received a reprimand, and Ricardo was left wondering if he might have more luck somewhere else. Spoilers, he did not. Ricardo's departure from the team for Renault in 2019 gave Red Bull the chance to stop pretending that Verstappen wasn't their main priority. With their cars getting increasingly competitive, Verstappen came in third in the championship in 2019 and 2020, which perfectly set the scene for his 2021 World Championship. The 2021 season was like something out of a movie. The young prodigy without a championship versus the title defender with seven World Championships. The tire rubbing rivalry lasted until the very last round, with the two championship contenders entering in with equal points. In the end, Verstappen came out victorious, becoming the first Dutch driver to ever win a championship. Alas, Verstappen had more than his fair share of controversies, and his first world championship wasn't free of it either. You see, as he and Hamilton were pretty evenly matched throughout the race, Verstappen's win was aided by a tyre change during a virtual safety car, and then another tyre change during an actual safety car, with only seven laps left in the race. Furthermore, race director Michael Massey made a controversial decision to allow the five lapped cars between Hamilton and Verstappen to unlap themselves before restarting the race with only one lap remaining. After which Verstappen breezed past Hamilton with his brand new soft tyres and took the win. Without Massey's decision or Latifi's shunt in the final laps of the race, Hamilton might have broken Schumacher's record of World Driver Championships and taken home his 8th championship win. Despite the controversial conditions under which Verstappen won, by 2021 there was no one still doubting that we were dealing with a Hall of Fame driver. When I said that he won his first championship title, I really meant it. I think it's almost a given that within a couple of years, Max will have seven consecutive world championships. It's already looking like he's going to be picking up his second title this year, as Leclerc and Hamilton are failing to put any pressure on him. However, Hamilton is still a competitive racer and could thwart Verstappen's championships hopes next year. But once he retires, and unless Ferrari or McLaren, or even for the sake of argument, Williams gets their stuff together and becomes a truly competitive team, we are probably in for a few years of Verstappen dominance. Out of everybody on the grid, it's pretty easy to say that Max Verstappen is the likeliest candidate to match or even beat Schumacher and Hamilton's seven title record. But this is a controversial question. What do you guys think of Max Verstappen? Are you a fan or do you despise him? I know it's one or the other. Other than that, I'll see you for the next video where I want to talk about Drive to Survive and how it's negatively and positively affected the sport.